Let me show you an image today. Image of a pale blue dot. This image was shot in 1990 from planet Saturn by Voyager 1 spacecraft. Almost 20 years later, this pale blue dot was shot again from Saturn, this time with a better camera by Cassini spacecraft. Now look at that dot again and this time observe it closely. That's here. That's home. That's us. Or in the words of famous astrophysicist Carl Sagan, that pale blue dot is the only home we've ever known. It is our planet Earth. Both Voyager and Cassini spacecrafts were sent by NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory or JPL, out of which Voyager 1 spacecraft left our solar system in 2012 to explore the interstellar space realm of this universe. And that's the power of robotic spacecraft missions. They're exploring the solar system and the universe beyond us and are an epitome of hard work we are humans on Earth. But why do we really do space exploration when we have so many problems in our own home? That's because space is something that we're not only a part of, but that encompasses and affects all of us. We observe our home planet with missions to study our climate and assist in disaster recovery. We discover distant worlds with telescopes such as Hubble and rovers like Curiosity to understand the origins of life. And then humans are also born with the zeal to look out, to wonder, to explore. Because after all, the Earth is a tiny speck of dust in the vast expanse of this universe. And so am I, a tiny speck of dust within the vast expanse of Earth. And this is a story about my quest to exploring the unknowns of this universe. They say big things have small beginnings in life, and they did for me too. I remember being a kid in second grade in a school in Lucknow, where my eyes were mesmerized by just a simple picture of an astronaut on moon. It was the first time that my tiny brain fathomed that space travel is a possibility, and people from Earth, this Earth have already accomplished that. And just like any other kid, I started binge watching space shows on Discovery Channel and blabbering around my family that I want to become an astronaut one day. Well, my mom took my blabbering really seriously and handed me this book, Wings of Fire by late President APJ Abdul Kalam that gave me my first technical insight into what goes into space exploration and how massive of an effort is it to send something outside of the Earth's atmosphere. A brown bull lady working for the American space program? That was my first reaction when I heard about astronaut Kalpana Chawla, who inspired million young girls around India, including me, to dream of sky and even fly beyond it. Well, these little things in life helped me realize that engineering is my way into the space exploration industry. In, 2012, in 2010, I began my engineering degree in electronics and communications from Punjab University, where I started learning how to build small embedded system robots with the hope for building a large robotic spacecraft one day. In 2012, I witnessed the historical entry, descent, and landing of the Curiosity rover on Mars on television. It was truly an engineering marvel built by the humans. That event solidified my target for doing something for the space industry. 
I remember my friends around me wondered about my goals and doubted how practical they are. My parents too were a little anxious, but they kept encouraging me to pursue my dreams with a smile on their face. And really now that I think of it, I realize that all you need is one person in life to believe in you. So in 2012, after my graduation, I got into the Masters in Space Systems Engineering program at University of Michigan Ann Arbor. That program was my first step closer to what I always wanted to learn and try my hands on. I got myself involved in some CubeSat projects. Um, CubeSats are these tiny 60 centimeter by 60 centimeter satellites aimed at doing science research at a smaller scale and cost from space. I also worked on a high altitude space balloon project that we launched with a bunch of sensors on board. These projects gave me an insight into the different types of components that build a large satellite spacecraft system and also helped me bridge the gap between theories and practical implementations. Now fast forward 2016, after two NASA internships at NASA Glenn in Cleveland and NASA JPL in Pasadena, I was hired to work on the Mars 2020 mission as a full-time NASA JPL employee. Now I'm a systems engineer at JPL. Systems engineering is similar to what I'd say engineering Lego blocks into a Lego toy. You have so many small blocks that you'd need to plug in together to make the right toy that meets your idea. My role is similar. I help in integrating and testing smaller subsystems and components together to form a giant spacecraft that would someday not even stay on this planet. And before I jump into what I did for the Mars 2020 mission, let me give you a little bit overview of this mission. So the Mars 2020 mission has been chartered to search for lives, for, for signs of Asian microbial life, which will advance NASA's quest to explore the past habitability of Mars using a rover named Perseverance, which is like a thousand kilos small car loaded with instruments. The rover has a drill to collect core samples of Martian rock and soil, then store them in sealed tubes for pickup by a future mission that would ferry them back to Earth for detailed analysis. Perseverance will also test technologies to help pave the way for future human exploration of Mars. Also strapped to the rover's belly to the journey of Mars was a tech demonstration, the Mars helicopter or the Ingenuity helicopter, which may achieve a Wright Brothers moment by testing the first powered flight on the red planet. Isn't it great? So for the Mars 2020 mission, I went on to test the descent stage motor control assembly that was integrated with the descent stage of the spacecraft to help lower down the Perseverance rover on the Martian surface. I tested and analyzed the internal memory organization and bus structure of the descent stage motor control assembly and identified major integration behaviors of the motor assembly with the rest of the system of the spacecraft. Well, those tests were quite a learning curve for me, but they helped me reach where I am, where I am today. Um, the descent stage successfully performed the Perseverance landing on February 18th of 2021. And all I want to say is that even with the virus around, humans persevered and landed the Perseverance rover on Mars with the hope of understanding life.
the Mars mission, I went on to work on an Earth science mission, the Orbiting Carbon Observatory 3, that reached the International Space Station in 2019 and has been collecting carbon dioxide data to understand the changing Earth atmosphere. Data from OCO3 are expected to significantly improve understanding of global emissions from human activities, for example, using measurements over cities. Here's a picture of the OCO3 team on board the International Space Station, which, astro which astronaut Christina Hammack gracefully clicked from her tabloid. And my next venture is NASA's next flagship mission to study Jupiter's icy moon Europa, which is supposed to have salty global oceans beneath the icy surface. Scientists all over the world believe that Europa's ocean might be twice the size of those found on Earth. The spacecraft is called Europa Clipper and it's been currently designed to do around 45 close flybys around Europa while collecting science data. Well, if you know, if there is icy ocean, there might be sign of biosignatures in Europa. And that's what this emission is aimed for. And with that, With perseverance, ingenuity, and missions to ocean wall like Europa Clipper, we've begun a new era of space exploration with robotic spacecrafts. Ones that will help humans eventually land on their feet on the alien lands. Thank you all for listening to me today.